This week in Football Mundial, it's a Dallas Cup special, a Texan treat. <laughs> and in our FIFA timeless moment, we'll marvel at the skills of Javier Saviola. The city of Dallas, the state of Texas. They know a thing or two about thinking big. And once a year, this is the stage for one of football's biggest and best youth tournaments. The team that made the headlines at this year's Dallas Cup was a group of under 14s who had never played together before and had no football pedigree. The Peace Team. Nine boys from Israel, nine from Palestine. Welcome to America by their Dallas hosts in their orange club shirts. The West Bank and Gaza Strip may not be the whole story of Israel and Palestine, but the tensions, the fear and fanaticism created was why Nobel laureate Shimon Peres founded the Center for Peace in 1996. It was to give boys like this what Perez called a new Middle East. And sport is one of the platforms of the campaign, with some 2,000 Israeli and Palestinian children involved in sporting activities together. Dallas was the first venture into America. The scheme's already taken joint teams to Norway, Poland and Austria, and naturally the boys got VIP treatment in Dallas City Hall. The peace team signifies a wonderful example set forth by young people to promote peace and understanding and acceptance of one another's cultures and religions. And the city of Dallas, in particular, wants to promote to the international community and the local community that diversity and acceptance among all cultures and all groups is something that we strive for. And it was the peace team who led the parade in the Dallas Cup's opening ceremony at the Lake Highland Stadium, where most of the big games were to be played. A significant scene for more than just these boys. Marching in first. One of the great traditions of this tournament, the introduction of the competitors. 160 teams this year, from under 12s to the supergroup professional level. 86 of them were from the States, but it's the foreign representation, 48 teams from 14 different countries, which highlights the Dallas Cup's appeal. Then a presentation to the Royal Navy for 24 years of consecutive appearances, and a battle cry from New Zealand. And then we're off. Old Trafford Manchester is a long way from Dallas, but it's only part of the journey travelled by a Brazilian who's now a World Cup winner and a member of one of the most glamorous clubs in the world. It seemed like only yesterday Cleverson was fighting for recognition with a different club on a different continent. He was competing with his Brazilian club Atlético Paranaense, like these young players are now uncertain of his future. Miguel de Lima, a former goalkeeper in Brazilian and American soccer, is at the heart of Atlético's youth development. He's been bringing Brazilian teams to the Dallas Cup for years and believes it's a great opportunity for the players to test themselves at a high level. Each country has its own style of play. Each country has its work philosophy. In an open competition such as the Dallas Cup, you get this opportunity because you get to come and play against teams from Mexico, England and Costa Rica. And with so many teams and different nationalities involved, it's an important experience which really helps in the development of players of this age. It's also a chance to learn something of American history at the JFK Museum in Dallas, something probably more familiar to one of their players, the first ever American to sign for this Brazilian club. Michael Banner, making his own history. But what does Banner think made him attractive to this South American club? Growing up, I, liked, I used to watch a lot of Brazilian players, and one of my favorite players is Denilson. 
and that's what I try to model when I play, and I guess that's what, what they were attracted to. Just the flashy play, I love that. Just beating players, crossing, shooting, it's one twos. It's the kind of game I like. It's the kind of, kind of game I grew up watching. Adjusting to the Brazilian way of life has apparently been easy for the young boy from Washington, D.C. He learned to speak Portuguese within three months, and his game has made good progress. But playing alongside the Brazilian under-18 captain Evandro can't be bad for your development either. The attacking midfielder is being touted as a future Rivaldo, with his vision, passing and finishing already very impressive, and his will to win. I think... I see myself as an intelligent player who develops the game, providing passes for others to score. I'm enjoying this competition a lot. I've learned a very important thing about football in Europe and outside Brazil. It's that they take strengths very, very seriously. Atletico, from the southern city of Curitiba, has one of the most extensive youth academies in Brazil, with over a hundred boys in full-time training. Many of them make a career in professional football, and it's more than likely that there's another Cleberson in there about to fly the nest. The man with the most difficult job here is the tournament director, Randy Jones, not only with the responsibility of recruiting the top teams, but also ensuring the foreigners can actually enter the U.S., made much harder since America tightened security and immigration procedures. In many parts of the world nowadays, when you make applications for an interview appointment, just for the appointment to, uh, to get the visas, sometimes it'll take anywhere from two to three months before the appointment is even scheduled. In fact, this year I had three different teams call me about a week and a half before the tournament and said, you know, Randy, our visa interview is in May 23rd, you know, like a month after the tournament. Yeah. Are you married? Right. In overall supervision of the tournament is the Dallas Cup executive Gordon Jago, an experienced coach and manager in England and the US, who's now based in Dallas. His biggest success has been attracting sponsors. Most big companies are very interested, you know, from a business point of view, that's future customers. And because of the international factor, and for example, the peace team that you've been here and seeing this week, and we've had teams from Northern Ireland, which have been nine Catholic boys and nine Protestant boys, those sort of things. Um, Dallas is a very rich city. And, um, you know, if you've got the right sort of uh, situation, um, as I've said, i.e. Um, helping kids who need help, um, then those, these companies will come on board. And some sponsors have signed long-term partnerships because of what the Dallas Cup represents rather than the exposure it attracts. And it's proved to be good business for the city. We book uh, over 6,000 room nights, uh, restaurants and such. They say it has an economic effect to the city of Dallas to the tune of 11 million, which isn't bad for a youth tournament. Putting your mark on the Dallas Cup. This is the 25th Dallas Cup, and in the past, plenty of players have gone on to make a mark in the game. Americans like Landon Donovan, Claudia Rayner, Brian McBride, John O'Brien, and Freddie Adu have all played here, and quite a few big name foreigners, too. When Sao Paulo beat AC Milan in the Supergroup final of 96, a kid called Ed Nielsen scored their first goal. In 2002, he was a FIFA World Cup winner with Brazil and now plays for Lyon in France. Apart from Ed Nielsen, Diego of Santos played here, Ant Kleberson, Raul with Real Madrid's under-19 team, David Beckham with Essex under 15 Michael Owen with Mid Wales schools under 12, Harry Kuehl and Jonathan Woodgate with Leeds, Wayne Rooney, Everton under 14s, plenty of talent has passed through. Smile please, ambassadors of a worldly mission to promote peace and understanding is what these children have been called by the Paris Centre for Peace. The peace teams have been seen as a way of bringing Hebrews and Palestinians together socially with the aid of sport. <laughs> You can hardly tell a difference between Israelis and Palestinians. Ten days like this abroad is a superb way to become best friends. 
Every child, no matter if he is an Israeli or a Palestinian, wants to win. And the only way to win is by cooperating and working together as a team. We're probably going to see it in the games they take part in. Alon Beer is the Perez Center representative in the Israeli link in this mission. Beer believes the Dallas Cup provides a practical opportunity for these kids to live, play and fight together for a cause on the pitch rather than against one another. There's even a chance for everyone to be winners. In the current project we have 700 children in 14 football schools from different parts of Israel and the Palestinian Authority. We decided which children would join according to the recommendations of the trainers. It's important to mention that we are not talking about a group that plays regularly in competitions, but a group that plays as part of a community activity in the afternoon. This time the group is involved in a more professional tournament. A new team of friends, but how would they cope with their sporting opponents? A local team, Nomads Academy. For a minute, it looked as if they might score. But then it all became too much. There was one goal, then another, then another, then another. The game finally ending up 9-0 to the American side. For Ala Aldin Badri, his score is irrelevant. He's just happy to have been involved in such a significant project. Most of the kids understand how and what we're trying to achieve here. They're seriously helping each other to try and achieve something. And already many of them have changed their opinions. Whilst the boys have enjoyed their short time in Texas, they're all aware of what they're soon returning to and how they'd like things to change. We must, we and the Jews, hold hands together. And we must make peace in the whole region, not just between Israel and Palestine, but also between the US and Iraq. Key to the success of the Dallas Cup are the 1,200 volunteers who flock to Texas to help make this event happen. Involved in every aspect of the running of the competition, from meeting, registering, entertaining and hosting the teams, the volunteers are the engine that drives the organization. Sue Slater and Mary Link epitomize the spirit of the tournament. For five years they've organized the volunteers, supervised the Dallas Cup accommodation programs and managed one of the four fields where the football takes part. We enjoy working with the kids from all the different countries and with the local kids and seeing the local kids get all excited about the, uh, uh, the prospects of playing against the international team. We put in a lot of sweat for 52 weeks out of the year to have this one week with the kids out here on the fields and to see their smiles and their faces. With over 40 foreign teams arriving in Dallas, the organizers turn to locals to put up the younger foreign players. This is called homestay. Football Mundial visited Brian Kerr and his two new South African friends, Dane and Ross from Ikapa United. This is Vivian Kerr's fourth homestay experience, already having hosted foreign visitors when Brian's older brother took part. It's the interaction that we want with our children, with the international players. Uh, we want to see how other cultures live with the South Africans. They're just like us, they eat the same foods, maybe not as much, play the same games, they enjoy the, the same sports and social activities as um, the American children do. Adjusting to the time difference and the generous Texan portions at mealtimes have been the biggest issues for the visitors. All three boys teams had early exits from the Dallas Cup, but there was still a sense of competition in the house. Homesickness or simply being overwhelmed by totally different living conditions was a danger, but the South Africans have settled well. I want to thank Brian and Atomobile for their hospitality and I really thought here we run cowboys here in the streets and no, tell us it's, it's really good. Thank you. Another vital group of volunteers, the 158 men and women who make up the referees contingent, with FIFA officials coming from as far as Qatar. And also those taking early steps in refereeing through the English Football Association support, like 19-year-old Simon Mather. Oh, he's been superb. It's every day you turn up, get your game sorted out, meet the referees, your assistants, your fourth official, and go out and do a game and enjoy it. It's been 85, 90 degrees, so plenty of sun cream, plenty of water, fluids. 
just looking after yourself really make sure you don't dehydrate and get burnt it may have been Karen and Mike Flanagan who received the Volunteer of the Year award this time, but when it comes to hospitality and generosity, the Dallas Cup is in a class of its own. And continuing the youth theme in our FIFA timeless moment. Mothers always take pride in their son's achievements and this mother can be particularly proud. At 16, when most kids are sitting their first exams, her son, the baby-faced Argentine Javier Saviola, was making his first team debut for River Plate. When we interviewed him in 1999, he was already an idol and had just been named South American Player of the Year, aged 18. It's a shock because everything's happened so quickly. I was just 16 when I made my first team debut. All of a sudden, lots of things were being discussed, like bids for me. Sometimes I'm surprised, but I think I was well prepared to know how to cope with it. In 2001, Saviola's reputation was further enhanced at the FIFA World Youth Championship in Argentina. He scored an outstanding 11 goals, a world record at that level. Even before the tournament was over, Europe's biggest clubs were climbing over themselves to get his signature. He eventually chose Barcelona, who paid a club record fee of 36 million euros for the young striker. His goal in the final helped Argentina win the tournament and made Saviola the most talked about player in South America. And his goals record is likely to stand for some time. The foreign teams at the Dallas Cup come with different agendas. For the Manchester United under-12s, this is fun but it's also a test of how they handle the travel, the conditions, the opposition. And the fact that Manchester United beat one team 11-0 but failed to progress beyond the group stage isn't significant. Can they keep playing positively? Have they got all-round skills? That's what counts. We might see some of these players again. We might not. No foul, don't die. Hold your men. North Shore United, a New Zealand's oldest football club, formed 117 years ago and now running 69 teams of all age groups. But New Zealand soccer is poorly supported and young players have to look beyond their own country for opportunities. That is one reason for bringing this team across here to be seen. Uh, several boys are of the age now where they're looking to see if they can find a scholarship to an American university and the Dallas Cup is the ideal vehicle for that because it's heavily scouted by the actual uh, universities. 22 former members of North Shore United are currently at colleges and universities in the States, but it's a long way to come to try to exploit your football talent, and they didn't progress beyond the group stages either. And not only is the Dallas Cup a testing ground for young players, it's also where we see the up-and-coming coaches. Hartlepool United's under-19s. Hartlepool, from England's northeast, a football stronghold, is neither fashionable nor wealthy, but they do have a strong youth development system. One of their coaches is Paul Stevenson, a former Newcastle and Millwall player. The importance for me is to see that they're making progress, even if it's steady. Some of them have gone quickly, some have gone a bit slower. Um, but as long as I'm making steady improvement and you see the improvement in the game, then me as a coach, I'm happy with that because I know that we're going to get them to where we want them. And that's in Hartlepool's first team. Hartlepool was smart enough to get some sponsorship from a Dallas law firm and bold enough to bring much younger players than the under-19 category. Five of them were under 16, but looked much more mature than the opposition. For Eintracht Frankfurt under 14s, the Dallas Cup was a new experience. And one lesson they learned was to be careful with their celebrations. Someone could get hurt. We want the kids to do the best they can, and so we seek out the best tournaments around the world. We were invited to the Dallas Cup and gratefully accepted. One bonus from their visit was a trip to see Dallas Mavericks. The former Eintracht Frankfurt basketball player Dirk Nowitzki is now one of the Mavericks stars and it's not only footballers who are role models. Dirk is very popular in Germany because he's a very good player and he carries himself well. All part of the player's learning curve. The 
Texas Longhorns, formed 35 years ago, are the Dallas Cup host club. And few people have been more involved in the game at all levels in the US than their current head of coaching, Dave Durr. He was the MLS's longest serving coach with Dallas Burn and is still involved with coaching US national youth teams as well as running his own agency. America has more youth football than any other country in the world. It's big business. For the most part, it's recreational, with few players getting within shooting distance of the professional game. The route to the top has usually been through the college system, but things are changing. I think you see a lot of kids not going through college now. I mean, a lot of the top players are going directly into the professional ranks. And you don't see that uh, here before because we didn't have that kind of strength. College is a three-month season. It's not really uh, there to produce soccer players. It's there to produce academics. Most Texan teams have to qualify to appear here through their own state championship. But it was still a surprise to some that U.S. national age group teams were playing here, usually with experimental lineups. And there's a good reason why they're here. When you look at this country, it's huge. I mean, and it's very hard for any program to encompass everything because it's just such a big country. So it's important that uh, you find these kind of avenues where everybody's in one place and the coaches not only get a look at their team, but maybe some kids that they missed. This is one of the uh, great players in American football. Very few individuals have done as much for American soccer as Lamar Hunt, one of the most famous Dallas residents. He's not just an enthusiast, he's one of the great figureheads of US sport, a visionary and major investor in American football and basketball particularly and a guided tour of his personal Hall of Fame is a privileged glimpse into what sport means to him. And the last two are Buck Buchanan and Mike Webster. Lamar Hunt's involvement in soccer goes back almost 40 years. He's the investor operator of the MLS teams in Dallas, Columbus and Kansas. And Texan soccer is about to benefit from his vision. Kansas City Wizards play and this is a Kauffman Stadium where the Kansas City Royals play. The Dallas Cup suffers because there aren't enough soccer-specific stadia in the area. Lake Highlands is a good high school facility but built for American football. The Dallas Cotton Bowl, a World Cup venue, is too big and too expensive even for the MLS team Dallas Burn. But in the city of Frisco, half an hour north of Dallas city centre, the Lamar Hunt Sports Group is about to build a 115-acre entertainment centre with 17 full-size pitches and an all-seater 20,000 stadium where Dallas Burn will play. Well, I think I can say without question it's going to be the uh, Mecca or it'll be the center of soccer activity in Texas. So it'll be a place where youth tournaments can be played and uh, training, preseason training for MLS teams can be held. And I think it'll bring a new level of interest. Lamar Hunt built the first soccer-specific stadium in the States in Columbus, Ohio for one of his MLS teams. Now his Frisco complex will put Texas soccer into a different league. About the only thing that went wrong with the 25th Dallas Cup was the weather on the final day. Bitterly cold, which seriously affected spectator turnout but not the quality of the play. A Texan team won the under-12 category, and although American teams reached the finals of the next three age groups, they were all beaten by Mexican clubs, with Tigres winning the tough under-17 category. Paul Stevenson saw his Hartlepool United youngsters turn on the style in the second half against New York's Metro Stars to win the under-19 title, and most of them are young enough to play in the same age group next year. Lads, the second half, we did we did it the right way. We yeah, defended man. properly. We defended properly. There weren't a threat when we did that. We sorted it out, half time, and I tell you what, attacking wise, scintillating, brilliant. Get it! Oh, no! In the super group, Atletico Paranaense played most of the final against Argentinos Juniors with 10 men after an early sending off, but won the game on the golden goal in extra time. Once again, showing Brazilian talent and hard work pay dividends. I'm very happy to have won this tournament. We've been training for this for a very long time, and in this world, there's only space for winners. We'll see some of these players again. And then it was goodbye. 
For the peace team and their hosts, it was extraordinary how well they all got to know each other in a week, even with the language problems. Nine Israeli boys, nine Palestinian boys, and a few games of football in America, maybe a drop in the ocean, but it worked. To see the um, farewells and the tears, um, I know many of the homestay people said they didn't want to let the boys go home. Um, but it's been marvellous to see uh, boys of all nations hugging each other um, and it, it's just been a tremendous uh, emotional experience but that's what the Dallas Cup's about. Then the peace team headed for home, but to what? They'll never forget the 25th Dallas Cup. Next week, we have a special report on the latest instalment in the incredible life of Diego Maradona. And we're in the Czech Republic, where champions-elect Banik Ostrava are on the verge of their first title in 23 years. See you then.